Neil deGrasse Tyson tweeted something the other day that's been repeated so many times it's just become accepted as fact, and it's that medical errors cause hundreds of thousands of deaths per year. But the funny thing is, if you look over the last two decades when medical error has been a real key priority in medicine, the number keeps going up. It started at around 100,000, then 200, then 400, and now you see news websites uh, unquestioningly quote that half a million Americans die in a given year from medical error, and if you listen to the quacks and the chiropractors, they'll say it's nearer to a million. Or you might have heard it phrased that medical error is now the third biggest killer of Americans, and by extrapolation, uh, other developed countries, after heart disease and cancer. And this claim is not restricted to the press, nor those with an axe to grind against the medical profession. You hear a lot of medical professionals themselves say the exact same line when campaigning. Is medical error a big problem? Of course it is, which is why so much money and resources have been poured into it over the last 20 years or so uh, to try and make things better, often in response to these exact figures being presented at hospital meetings uh, by those who want to improve the system. Every medical professional I know wants to improve things and make coming to hospital as safe as possible. But let's stop for a second and do some basic maths. If we take the number to be somewhere in the middle of the estimates, that would be 10% of all deaths in the USA in a given year. For further context, there were 36,000 road traffic accident fatalities in the USA last year. Uh, which is only 10% of the number of deaths by medical error. Or to keep going, there were 715,000 deaths in American hospitals in 2010, the last year that I could find information for. So that would mean that one third, if not one half of all deaths in hospital are due to a doctor or nurse or similar making a mistake. Does that really sound realistic? or feasible, it would make medical error the number one cause of death in hospital. Not respiratory failure, kidney failure, sepsis, heart disease, no, all of those would be way lower than medical error as the number one cause. It's quite possible to acknowledge that medical error is a terrible source of mortality and morbidity without endorsing these statistics which really don't make any sense at all. Medical error is thankfully exceedingly rare. In countries like the US or the UK every serious mistake is thoroughly investigated and every near miss as well is also uh, carefully investigated. So if we were to believe these figures then medical staff themselves are responsible for at least one in three deaths in hospital. So you might as well not ever seek medical attention in the first place, it'd be safer staying at home, and we know that isn't the case. Let's talk about serious medical mistakes. A surgeon removes the wrong organ. A nurse gives 10 times the prescribed dose of morphine. These are clearly mistakes, and they're clearly catastrophic things that should never happen. However, what about if I were to quote to you a 10% risk of major bleeding from abdominal surgery? and you go ahead, you have your operation, everything seems to go fine on the day, there's no issue that's noticed, but two days later on the ward, you have a bleed and you require two units blood transfusion. Is that an error uh, or is it a recognized complication? Moreover, is it avoidable? Even with all the information available at the time, it's often impossible to say whether something like this is avoidable. And a lot of the data sets analyzed are retrospective, they're looked at years later when that information isn't even present. So where does this exponentially repeated factoid come from? Two publications stand out. One is from 1999 from the Institute of Medicine. It's a consensus report called To Err is Human, and it's based on figures from the 80s and 90s. It came up with a number of 98,000 deaths being due to avoidable medical errors in the US in a given year. The studies that they looked at examined small numbers of patients, particularly sick patients, and they determined the preventability that the authors themselves decided, and then extrapolated that to all hospital patients. The methodology was somewhat unusual. An error was anything that had a greater than 50% chance of contributing to a death as opposed to causing it directly. However, over the subsequent 20 years, the numbers actually went up. The second publication is much more recent, from 2016, although the data that they used are 
uh, actually mostly quite old. It's from the world famous Johns Hopkins and the world famous British Medical Journal, so highly reputable. But remember, the MMR and autism publication appeared in The Lancet, so don't be fooled by prestigious credentials. Always look to the source material. The article, which lists no formal methodology, looks at four studies, one of which was compiled by a for-profit company which sells hospital safety ranking information, and the other three were quite small and were actually not compiled to look for medical error but to look for medical harm and I'll explain the difference. If I appropriately, i.e. correctly prescribe a blood thinning medication to someone who requires that tablet and they go home and they have a bleed whilst they're at home, then they have come to harm from a medical intervention. That is a medical harm, but it is not a medical error. If I prescribe the same blood thinning medication to someone who has a liver disorder, which means that they shouldn't be taking that tablet, and they go home and they bleed, then they have come to uh, harm from medical intervention, but that is a medical error because I should have never prescribed that tablet. Another example would be, say somebody is admitted to intensive care with overwhelming infection and multi-organ failure. On their notes, it lists that they develop a rash when they are given penicillin. And unfortunately, when they're admitted, they're written up for penicillin, they receive a dose, and sure enough, they develop a rash. This was clearly an avoidable medical error. This is the kind of uh, thing that shouldn't be happening. But if they d die, a week later from overwhelming infection and multi-organ failure, was that penicillin rash um, relevant to their death? Did it contribute to their death? Um, this information was not recorded and there is no simple answer to that. So you can well imagine that there are many uh, grey areas in medical histories because medicine is complicated. The BMJ piece also doesn't mention a key piece of information that you only glean from looking at the source material and that is 50% of the population studied were in their last six months of life. They were very unwell and predominantly elderly patients. A lot of the information is from Medicare so by definition over 65s. However they extrapolated all this information to everybody all patients in uh, the healthcare system. So healthy young mums being admitted to hospital to give birth, the most common cause for hospital admission. Football players being admitted for a toe operation. Weightlifters with a bad back. What did we say in a previous video about selection bias? This is a classic example of extrapolating from one group of patients with certain characteristics to apply to everybody. It's incorrect use of data. So what actually is the rate of deaths from medical error? per year? The honest answer is I don't know. More carefully constructed estimates place the number in the USA at something like 25,000 deaths per year, which is 10 times lower than the rate quoted in the BMJ article. But unlike the tweet that opened this video, I'm not trying to compare numbers to lessen anybody's suffering. Each of those 25,000 patients died uh, horrible and avoidable deaths and that must be improved. What is promising though is that the rate and mortality associated with uh, adverse incidents is gradually improving. Ultimately, deciding whether an error led to a patient death will always involve some degree of subjectivity. But unfortunately our data set is such a complete mess that data analysis has become hopelessly inaccurate and convoluted, which is really a reflection on the paucity of quality health records in every country. Medical professionals go into the job to alleviate suffering, but mistakes do happen. And it's a horrible feeling when you're the one that made a mistake and a real person has suffered and often their families as well. Those who are serious about making medicine safer should be seeking more accurate statistics because otherwise they can't track the efficacy of any intervention that they hope to introduce. The media should be more responsible with their reporting because needlessly scaring patients helps nobody and irresponsible whataboutery from leading journalists or science communicators just distracts from other important problems. And those that wish to depict hospitals as death traps uh, to promote their own brand of quackery and pseudoscience, the so-called death by medicine brigade, as some refer to them, will continue to do so. Uh, because it suits their purposes, but of course we all know they didn't watch this far. I've tried to keep this video short in the hope that it would be shown to people who use the uh, erroneous statistic to beat others around the head. I hope people watch, but as 
I resulted is necessarily a brief take, so for more depth I've included quite a few links below. They are really fantastic and I urge anybody who wants to look at it in more depth to read them. For people that have got this far and think, well, he's bound to say that, he's part of the medical profession, um, perhaps I'm not going to change your mind. I hope you can see from other videos on this channel that I have no problem highlighting uh, shortcomings within medicine. And that doesn't make me special at all. That makes me like every other doctor I know, keen to improve how things are done. Like all of my colleagues that are passionate about quality improvement, I want to make things better. Um, and I'm in no way trying to lessen the suffering of those who have been on the receiving end of medical error, but we have to pursue accurate data in order to prevent others uh, suffering the same.